welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. The blood of Jesus is not the color red. Take that out of your mind. That's not what we're talking about. The blood of Jesus is not just the liquid that falls from a man, even though there is a physical expression to that. The blood of Jesus is a summation of the revelation. Watch this now. The revelation behind his becoming sin. Who knew no sin? That an unjust man, a just man, took upon himself the cloak of being unjust. Are we together? And that by that, that spiritual law, he died a death he did not deserve. Are we together now? And that the basis of that death he did not deserve was that the man who deserved to die in him can now find liberty. So every time you invoke the blood, what happens in the realm of the spirit is that a memorial is raised. Are we together now? That memorial echoes the fact that an unjust man went through something i mean a just man went through something he should not go through that means no matter the basis of the accusation because of the liberty that just man has brought you are free that is the thing about the blood you have to understand this now most believers shout the blood of jesus but they don't even know what they are saying or that's just mean the liquid the red liquid of jesus like that thing you transfuse to a patient who is not feeling well you will never get a miracle that way Blood is an instrument of mercy to you, but an instrument of justice before judgment. Most people think the blood is an instrument of judgment. No, it's an instrument of justice. It raises a memorial. The judge himself being God, not Satan. He is the judge of all the earth. So every time the ministry of the blood is invoked, that memorial is raised in the heavens. How that a just man, sinless, became sin, carried the sin of all the people. Are we together? Every accusation brought upon Jesus was false. So that every true accusation upon you, by his verdict, you are also free. So, Satan has a name with respect to the ministry of liberty. He's called the accuser of the brethren when it has to do with liberty watch this he's no longer a thief satan is not always a thief he changes according to what he tries to achieve when we talk about justice you have to go to the court the high court the very courts that the judge at that point god does not just sit there as creator he sits there as judge the judge of all the earth the accuser of the brethren comes are we together and that he accuses the brethren day and night what is the accusation I have a right to oppress this family the reason is that the grandfather called me through the spirits and the mediums and he said empower our farms in return I will give you all the female children in this family and I have maintained agriculture they have produced all you know from their farms i have maintained my own part now a young lady a young guy because he came for koinonia he's asking me to lose my 150 year old grip over that family it does not work that way watch this so if you now come and say well i think you must go no the system of justice must have a basis Ask our judicial people even when they met out judgment, it is not based on sentiment. According to section this, subsection this, this is the penalty that follows such a thing. Are we together? Do you know that in the court of law, now I'm not a judge, but I know this much that in the court of law, you can have the truth, but if you don't know how to communicate it, you will still go to jail. So having the truth is one thing. Knowing how to communicate it, in a way that relates to the laws that govern you bring forth your strong reasons bring forth your strong reasons why should satan take his hands off your life 
because you are tired of him you are joking why should satan leave your family and your destiny alone because you are tired of him no sir there is only one basis for the liberty of the believer christ jesus and the sacrifice christ jesus and the sacrifice if you bring yourself and your righteousness the realm of the spirit reminds you that there are three kinds of sin personal sin territorial sin and sin from bloodline you may be free from personal sin but how about the territory you are part of a territory can sin it is still sin so when you stand before the judge of all the ages the basis of that victory is the speakings of the blood the moment you bring the blood into the equation every accusation doesn't matter how many years doesn't matter every decade because you see listen when God judges he judges based on who he is not based on the situation there when God judges he judges based on his person and the Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate you have to understand this he is slow to anger and he's rich in love God does not desire that any man perish this is the character of the judge are we together now the blood leverages on the integrity the very nature of God with respect to what has been done in Christ once you engage the blood watch this now Satan has nothing else to say because the basis of Satan's operation is the fact that a human will was part of that negotiation are we together now somebody agreed Satan you can invade this family and now you are saying he played his own part of the deal gave them whatever they were looking for fame or whatever it is now grandfather is dead now father is dead you have come into Christ and the Bible says those things should not hold on to you again just believing that they will never happen is a joke there are rules of engagement this is what I'm teaching you rule number one is that you must know how to engage the blood someone say the blood one more time say the blood so every time you say the blood of Jesus don't just think liquid are we together now no think justice mercy to you or for you but justice translated as judgment to every other power ah, this is powerful 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 yes May Rahama Chia do water Banda Wani Seke Yesu May Rahama Gahawa Yena Banda Wani Seke Yesu May Rahama to water, Banda Wani Sekai, Yesu, Mera Hama, Bawa Yena, Banda Wani Sekai. Apostle, but your grandfather worshiped idols. Maybe you yourself even worship idols. And the Bible says, The soul that sinned, it shall die. It shall die if it does not come to the mercy seat there is something called the throne of grace you know one thing with the throne of grace there is no qualification to get there Christ is your qualification the throne of grace does not have any entrance exam you write you come that is the throne that you can come as you are provided it is when you come that you encounter mercy and you encounter grace to help in time of need who is learning now look at me let me tell you the truth I got to a point in my life where I took a careful examination of my life my family tree the realities that were before me and I knew that I needed to dismantle a lot of altars a lot of altars you've heard my story as a man of God, 
I was being oppressed by demons. Not many people will be honest to tell you this. People will just hide and make it look. It's a lie. There's no point hiding. Vulnerability is not weakness. That there was once upon a time. And because of the privilege of the prophetic, I will be lying down in my room and I will watch these spirits enter. It's not, I, I'm not talking of, it's, uh, you would see them. I shouted Jesus, like the Bible says I should shout it. And they seem to be unaffected. I knew that mm -mm, God has to be true. There is something I do not know. How could the name of Jesus be so powerless? No. Then I found out that the name was not in the chanting of it. The name was not in the pronunciation. Mm -mm. She had to water. Banda wani sekai. Yesu. Mera. I remember engaging do you know I would lie down to sleep and have these demons press me I could hear people speak but to wake up it was drama I dreaded night times because the moment I do you know it got to a point where I would lie down at the edge of the bed it doesn't matter how wide the bed is I would lie down at the edge so that at least I would try it would look like I was suffocating to die Come on now. Altars. They are real. Oh. They are. You believe me on that. They are real. They are real. I know some of the healthiest people in the world. They, they, they are meticulous about anything. But they hit a certain age. Bam! And suddenly, they will tell you, it looks like there's some pain somewhere. And they tell you cancer. Or they tell you, some prostate or they tell you one demonic something you're lying down one day you just collapse and as healthy as you are you take orange every day banana every day they still say you have low blood pressure what must you take then there are people who stop eating rice 10 years ago they are still sick they stop eating cassava they stop eating yam i'm not saying i'm not giving you a medical advice i'm just saying what is left what is left? No rice, no yam, no eggs, no plantain, no cabbage, no nothing, no liquids. Whether you are fasting or not, these programmings have vowed that you must die. What you need is the blood. The blood. The blood. That Father, I come to you by the blood, not in my righteousness. That every demonic installation that predated my existence, the Bible tells me I can bring forth my strong reason. And I come to the judge of all the earth. I come to the judge of all the earth. I come before the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things. Hitherto, these altars have been speaking negative things over my life, over my family. But I come by the blood and I invoke the blood, the blood upon altars. It doesn't matter what programming. I, it, it may not be your fault it's not a cause to come from the family you came from but you need to do something about it now before it tears your life into pieces let me tell you the truth please look up one of the biggest challenges with the church is that we are not entirely honest with ourselves we are more conscious of our reputation than dealing with what needs to be dealt with so there are many people who have all kinds of troubles sicknesses they are hiding troubles that they should deal with it and we just carry this fascia of things working well victory is real there's no point faking it if it is not working take responsibility and iron it out in righteousness someone said the blood yes sir the blood because for some of you Based on the description, you are supposed to be the next physical priest right now. 
as a medium to carry that thing based on the description whether you know it or not and there are some of you there's this demonic thing now uh, do I go into these things hallelujah that you engage the blood you engage the blood you engage the blood that by the blood of the eternal covenant my grandfathers may have made their choice my great grandfathers may have made their choice but this man I have decided as an act of my will listen 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 now please listen listen I want to teach you how to do it and I want you to listen to me in establishing your case before the court of heaven there are two bases only two I want you to please listen number one the first basis for establishing your victory is what Christ has done what Christ has done the blood that was shed upon the cross the victory that is in Christ the sufferings of Christ the substitutionary sacrifice there you go with the word again if you ever approach the realm of the spirit advocating liberty from the negative speakings of altars and it is just based on your fasting or based on your prayer i'm not saying those things are wrong or based on church attendance any other basis outside of the sacrifice of christ is not valid enough the parliament of heaven was only designed to honor the sacrifice of christ and whoever becomes a beneficiary of it through christ the second basis is the power of the will i'm teaching you the rules of engagement now the power of the will this becomes the basis of your making a defense before god that god gave everybody the power to choose so what is happening in my life is not a reflection of my choices and god is bound by his integrity to give me a chance to make my own choice who is understanding this now so that believers must have spiritual intelligence you don't just say god i'm tired of this trouble you are in heaven you are watching all of this do you want the devil to kill me before you're happy you all that lamentation does not lead to victory there are two bases this is how to approach the judge of all the earth god is father abba Pata. but when you are advocating liberty you are approaching your father who is the judge and you must know how to speak the language of the court of heaven the basis for victory number one the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus the blood that speaks better things the blood that has annulled everything calling you out from every tribe and every tongue and every nation lord it is true that i am yoruba it is true that i am hausa it is true that i am Igbo. but when i came into christ i was grafted into a new kingdom and it becomes unfair for me to be a victim of the foundational limitations that came with my natural descent are we together the first birth i didn't have the power to choose so now in christ the second birth is by choice the first birth you appeared Who is understanding this now? You are speaking the language of justice. So in addition to the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ, the Bible says, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. But these spirits are not giving a room for me to choose because it looks like the oppression vetoes my will. Therefore, God has to come in and give me a chance. If I use my own will and I choose destruction, then that becomes my lot. But until then, everyone on earth by God is given an opportunity, even if based on the law of time and chance. The blood, the blood, the blood. I am no longer interested in serving the idols that were served before me. I am no longer interested in that discussion that happened across the table. Did you hear what I said? I am no longer interested because I'm a child of God because I'm a child of God and because Satan is a stubborn spirit he's not just going to say ah okay I've had you mm -mm, he's not like that oh 
it's not like that so the blood number one let's finish up I'm showing you how to dismantle demonic altars you break the hold of demonic speakings by engaging the blood the basis for that is the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus are you ready for step two step two also doubles as how you rebuild an altar of righteousness you must engage what we call the covenant of sacrifice and listen carefully I'm not talking money pay attention so that you don't let the devil cheat you now because some of you are very very interesting with matters of money once you hear sacrifice aha uh -huh, there he goes mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> the sacrifice we're talking about here is not money at all the business of your destiny is more serious than naira and kobo are we together now did i speak about repentance yes part of breaking demonic strongholds is to also repent on behalf of yourself and on behalf of those connected to you without repentance the blood cannot speak I hope you know that the blood does not speak indefinitely the blood does not speak arbitrarily the blood is sponsored by a broken heart the activation of the power that is contained in the blood is sponsored by a broken and a contrite heart father I come before you admitting that my grandfather buried 30 virgins buried 20 children I admit the fact he may have gone but in the name of Jesus the Bible declares that if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and that the truth is not in us I come in genuine repentance as one who has obtained mercy in Christ and upon that ground even the finished work of Christ I advocate mercy over the legal speakings you see that then number two the covenant of sacrifice let's deal with that because I want us to pray now the covenant of sacrifice is a very serious covenant it is not a one-off covenant please listen everybody the covenant of sacrifice is the other parts to this equation of rebuilding altars that many believers have not been interested in the covenant of sacrifice is not a one-off sacrifice please listen is not a one-off sacrifice it's a sacrifice that must be initiated activated and maintained consistently if you want to walk in the reality of victory hallelujah the first object you are going to sacrifice if you want to rebuild an altar of righteousness that perpetually shuts every evil altar is your life your own life romans 12 and verse 1 you want to rebuild an altar of righteousness the first sacrifice that it demands is you total surrender total surrender I beseech thee, brethren by the message of God that you present your bodies not just your spirits who is learning your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable sacrifice now look at me there are many believers who do not want Satan to have a legal claim or a hold of their life but a part of them is still not dead to Christ for as long as there is still a part of you that is not interested in the things of God Satan still has a hold the Bible says Satan come to me Jesus is speaking now and he come to me and found nothing there are many believers today when Satan comes he will still find something that gives him a legal basis the sacrifice of your life do you know there are people who want to be delivered but not to be born again they are not interested in being born. don't talk to me about being born again don't talk to me about being serious with God just cast out this demon and let me go how much is it if you need money I can give you unfortunately the first sacrifice is not money it is your own life a committal to knowing Jesus loving Jesus living for him all the days of your life if you are not prepared look at me how many of you know that every altar is maintained by priesthood I didn't teach you that 
priesthood is the spiritual system that maintains altars are we together now it fans the coals the ambers so that those speakings continue when the priesthood that powers an altar fails the operation of that altar will fail the altar is as powerful as the priesthood that keeps it you know thriving and for many people they do not know that every altar that speaks against you has men and systems that have literally sacrificed their lives i want you to believe this there are people who don't do any other thing except to maintain altars and there are strict demands some of them because of the kind of office that they have to maintain those demonic altars there are times they don't see the sun for one week for whatever it is you see the men looking as if they are dead but they tell you this is the priest in charge of this altar are we together the law of sacrifice is a non-negotiable condition your entire life Lord I offer my life since I'm not going to serve Satan I will follow you holy since I'm not going to serve Satan I will follow you holy there's no such thing as I won't serve Satan and you too I'm still considering you are with Satan immediately automatically the altar returns who is understanding are we together yeah. I won't serve Satan all right choose you this day Lord I'm for you with my life I pledge my life to serve your purposes I belong to you this is the decision that many people have not made today is the reason why their advocacy to be free from the speakings of altars still has a hold of them when we challenge people to be serious with God is beyond just going to heaven it is engaging this law of sacrifice are we together sacrifice if Baal be God serve him if God be God serve him and Elijah says let the God that answer by fire let him be God when it was time for destruction Moses who is on the Lord's side this way any other person if you are not sure you are on the other side and every one of them the earth open and swallow them I've been captured by a love I can't explain now you have me and I'm forever changed I've abandoned everything I've ever known now I surrender this life is not my own I belong to you I belong to you I belong Life is not my own to you I belong I give myself give myself away. that my life is not my own it's a realm in the spirit called Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that liveth in me and the life that I live today in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me believers please hear me for as long as you are still playing games with the altars that are killing stealing and destroying is a matter of time it will catch up with you your real freedom is on your becoming the living sacrifice before your prayer before your fasting before your giving your life who is learning tonight there are people who will come to church 
even if the series is rapture, they would never be born again. They will watch people cry and say, Kai, this thing touched me. But make an altar call. They would never come out. Now, I'm not condemning you. But listen, let me tell you the truth. You are authorizing these altars to destroy your life. And let me tell you how God delivers families. Kai, this thing, ba, I, I feel so pained in my heart. God, God will grant us grace. We'll revisit this thing. Every time God wants to step into a family, he does not call all of them. He waits for the first person who shows interest in him. Did you hear what I said? The first person. So what God does when he wants to deliver a family is to set up a burning bush and he will wait for five years, for ten years, as people are growing, dying, moving, one day somebody will turn and see that burning bush. I want to show you how it works. Now that first person who turns, God will say, please come. I've been wanting to visit this family, but I cannot force you. I've been creating the burning bush, the dreams you've been having, the visions you've been having, the prophetic words you receive in the bus as you are passing. All of those things are signs, signs. Now listen, listen, listen. All God needs in every family is one representative, one. It could be more and it's great if it's more, but one out of a family of idol worship. Here comes a young lady, frail lady, came for koinonia, got born again in koinonia and God says, regardless your gender, can you give me a chance? We, we, I need to use your destiny on a project. There are things we need to clean up. There are things we need to work on. Else, your children and your children's children will have these patterns because there is a voice speaking. Hallelujah. Finally, after much convincing, he finds one lady or one man or one old man because no one else was available or one young teenager because all the youths are busy looking for money but in any case let him find one man that's it from that one man he now says Moses you will be a deliverer but the way you are now you can't go to Pharaoh I can't send you this way you are ill equipped the destiny is to advocate an exodus. So all the trainings that I'm subjecting you through is not for yourself. I'm speaking to someone now. For five years, you've been in the school of the spirit. It is the making of that deliverer. Because there are not many in your family who are willing to give God a chance. Now that he's found you, he doesn't seem to let you go. He's insisting on you. Insisting on you, insisting on you, insisting on you, insisting that you must carry that anointing, insisting that you must build that capacity, insisting a sacrifice of your life, a sacrifice of your life. Building that capacity, building that formation, equipping you with the tools because you are going to be confronting altars, altars older than you, altars older than your grandparents, altars older than your parents. Now the question is, who is willing to give God a chance with your family, give God a chance with your life to say, Lord, like Isaiah, here am I, send me, make me, then send me. Let my mother not die. Make me and then send me. Let my father not be destroyed. My siblings may not be as spiritual, but before they catch up, I am available. 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 This cause of poverty over this family, I am available. 
this cause of women not remaining in their husband's homes, men not remaining in their wife's home, this cause, this cause of untimely death, this cause of mysterious sicknesses, this cause of being a graduate and there's no job, no product, no matter what it is. Lord, I am available. I am available. I'm available. My intent is for every one of my family members to be saved and used by you. But you can start with me. You can start with me. King of glory, you can start with me. You can build me. You can make me. You can furnish me. I don't mind the fire. I don't mind the furnace of affliction. Let it make me like the porter and the clay. Build me until I become. Build me. Someone pray. Something is happening here already. Take a minute, just one minute to pray. Pray. I was praying and fasting, crying out, and then my ceiling just disappeared. And I saw this creature, giant creature with eyes as big as the head of a human being. Red fierce eyes, looked like a dinosaur, having a tail that had its own life. And it was looking at me and it spoke to me. It said, so you think you want to bring God's people into abundance? I said, so this is the spirit. I know that lack of productivity leads to poverty but make no mistakes about it. There are spirits, there are programmings that enhance poverty. There are people who have the boat, the net, the fishing skill, but they never catch fish. Their issue is not laziness. When I saw that, I said, this is it. I will never serve the gospel begging for bread. I will never raise a people begging for bread, but I confronted that spirit. I saw him, he saw me. Thanks be to God. Every devil knows what victory is. This thing is beyond buying and selling. Oh, there is a realm where you stamp some things in the spirit and you return back to the earth, and it will be as if you are holding a charm on your hand. Men eager to favor you, doors opening for you, and people say you are lucky. No, you are not lucky, you are victorious. Victorious is the word, not lucky. Victorious. Hallelujah. Listen, you've heard the story that one time I had this vision and I was serving people bread. There was some machine, sit down for one moment. There was a, a machine that was manufacturing the bread and the honey, but I was the only one who was seeing it. And there was a long queue of people. And then I would hold the bread and put honey in between. And people were queuing and I would give it to them. And they would eat and go and gather their family members and return back. They thought I was the one making the bread. But I was the only one who was seeing the machine. It just makes the bread and cuts it. Mine is just to hold and serve. And I saw that. I said, this is it. This is the mystery of sufficiency. Having enough to give at all times. Because there is an energizing that though invisible is real. There is something God can do to a man that makes you sufficient at all times. Hallelujah. Now, I love my family. I love where I come from. But I saw certain things that happened to the men that I said, this thing has to be stopped especially the firstborn men. Now I know to many people it doesn't matter. They say it doesn't matter. Well, save Johnny. Thank God everybody has his destiny to live. But it does matter. You see, let me tell you how Satan operates. He does not strike at all times, especially when he sees pride. When he sees pride, he allows it to grow. So you would think you are free because he has not come. He can be patient for 10 years allowing your pride to bloat you call it victory then one day he hits you in a way that you will now say so that school of the spirit i jumped this is what is happening to a lot of people a lot of people think because the devil has not come around their vicinity they are free 
Many gyrated and made that kind of noise. Some for 20 years. Some after 30 years in ministry. 35 years in ministry. Just when they thought they were about to rest. He said, no, the altar still speak. He came. There's no taking chances with this thing. Better verify that what you call liberty is liberty indeed. So that you are not celebrating shadows in ignorance. Just because the devil is quiet does not mean you are free. I'm not glorifying Satan. I'm opening you up to the truth. Dominion cannot happen if you do not understand altars. Whether it is Satan you want to serve or God, there must be altars. There are covenants with God by the mercies of God that run this ministry you see. There are altars. There are speakings. There are things God said to do that if it is done, this ministry will never go down. There are things in the Bible we learn generally, but there are personalized instructions. One of them is if you can let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. If you can hide behind the cross and leave this blind pursuit of fame, this blind pursuit of name, man of God, MOG, run away from that deception. And I said, that's it, Lord. For you to be lifted high, all I want is for you. For you to be glorified. For you to be lifted, all I want. You know, someone, no, no, I'm saying this just, just to joke with my people. Someone made a statement and said, he's watched all our revival meetings. He said, we arrange a program like Koinonia. There's no special introduction to Joshua Selman. And I'm saying, there's nothing wrong with introduction. I say, if I go to preach somewhere else, they can introduce me. But I don't have time for that. It's just my, it's not, it's not like it's wrong. I don't have that time at all. Once it's time to preach, I wait impatiently. Once it's my turn, get out of the way for me. Let me do what I was born to do. You see that now. Now, it may not apply to everybody, but I'm telling you, one of the things you learn in rebuilding altars, please listen, I'm about to make a statement now. There are truths you will find from scripture, but in rebuilding a personal altar, God is going to demand certain specific covenants from you that is not general. If this does not happen to you, you are talking to a familiar spirit, not the God of the Bible. If it is the God of the Bible, are we together now? In rebuilding a covenant, there are secrets and mysteries unique to you that he will give you. And these instructions may not make sense to everyone. That's why you do not teach it as a doctrine. If you teach it as a doctrine, you will confuse people and mislead people because it can bless you but can destroy another. And depending on the gravity of the assignment, the instructions can be so strict even to your personal life. It is true. There are times because of the nature of the mantle and the oil you are carrying, God will tell you, my advice for you, you cannot have more than three children. You can have as many. But this is my terms with you. If you want to host this grace as safe as possible, these are the terms. The degree of compliance is the degree to which you will command power within creation. Now, you can't go around telling people if you have more than three children, you are wrong. No. But this is your personalized dealing. For some, God can give you an instruction and say, because of what I'm telling you, you cannot have 1,000, 2,000 houses around? No. No matter what it is, I need a certain level of consecration from your life that protects this oil. That's why I call it the covenant of sacrifice. Let me tell you this. We live in a world that disrespects people's covenants with God because when you see certain things happening, it looks very cheap, it looks very easy. But behind the exploits of the saints, there are both unique expressions of obedience from scripture and personal covenants, sometimes strict inconveniencing covenants. Hallelujah. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. 
You think I'm not human? That I want, we have the level of influence to program a system of fame for myself. But you can choose to do what you want to do and reap the consequence of disobedience. Or you can choose to hide behind the cross and allow that fire to continue to burn. Who is learning? Let's find a place to pray. So number one, your life. The second way to engage the covenant of sacrifice. I'm showing you the ways to engage the covenant of sacrifice. Number one, by offering your life. I hope we're still together. Number two, through prayers. Leviticus chapter 6, 12 and 13. The second way you engage the covenant of sacrifice in dismantling demonic altars and rebuilding and sustaining godly altars is to engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle. Why the ministry of prayer? Because prayer affords you the platform to verbalize your will and to verbalize your interest. Leviticus 6, 12 to 13. Let's read together. 12 and 13. When you're done writing, ready? One to go. And the fire. Come on, let's read with energy. Let's start again. One to go. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Ah. And he shall burn thereof the fat and the peace offerings. 13. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. This is called the covenant of sacrifice. You want to command dominion. There are three entities that are mentioned there. One, the altar. Two, priesthood. Three, fire. The Bible says the priest shall put wood every morning. Every morning, not every weekend. Every morning. You want the altar to keep burning, to keep speaking blessings, to keep speaking faith. You pray not as a response to tragedy. You pray not as a response to calamity. You pray as a lifestyle, not governed by fear. It is the modus operandi of dominion. So every morning, you are signing that spiritual register. I am a priest maintaining this altar. The altar that speaks favor. The altar that speaks blessings. The altar that speaks speed. The altar that speaks open doors. The altar that speaks ever increasing glory for koinonia. It is found through the covenant of sacrifice. Let me tell you the truth. Like every human being I admit to you. There are times that I get very tired. You have no idea. But it's a covenant. I know I have to get up. I know I have to pray. Sometimes you are tired. I return from meetings. I don't even know if I'm awake or I'm asleep. But in the name of Jesus, sometimes I just cry to God for strength, put my head for a few minutes, but I remember. I remember my destiny. I remember you. I remember the terms God gave me. And it brings energy. Lord, I obtain grace. I must sign that register. Shama Kaparagoda. It starts with sleepy eyes. It starts with a draggy voice. But soon, what you see becomes greater than what you are feeling. Let me tell you this. Never stop prayer because you are sleepy. Now sleep, but don't stop prayer because you feel sleepy. There is a supply of strength that will eventually swallow up. Satan knows our bodily limitations. So he will tell you, you are, you are human. Now don't get me wrong. There are times I sleep off. I remember one day I was praying. I knelt down. I'm telling you, I knelt down with seriousness. My Bible was up. I was typing. I can't even remember that I stopped typing. I know I was tired. That's the last thing I remember. And it was not a vision. It was not anything. I just slept like deep sleep, kneeling down there. I just got up and I said, well, Lord, you, you, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched. Jesus slept on his way to a crusade ground. On his way to a crusade ground. Honest admission. Honest admission. It's not 100%. I sleep, oh. Sometimes you get honestly tired. And while you are praying, dragging, just saying, and mercy, grace, mercy, grace. It's not because that's the only thing you know. It's just that that's the only thing that can sustain you at that time. But you must pray. Most of you have not yet seen prayer as a covenant, as a priesthood duty. 
So when things are fine, you don't pray. Until there is tragedy, then you quickly come. That fire brigade epileptic spiritual lifestyle cannot produce dominion. Pray for me, pray for me is good. I'm committed to praying for you. But let me tell you the truth. Everyone must leave this place knowing that you don't rebuild an altar by putting stones. You rebuild an altar by putting in the wood every morning. You wake up. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus, Shalika Parantoski Aparatosiata. This is the day that the Lord has made. I speak into this day. I speak into my children's day. I speak into the day of my husband, my wife. I speak over my parents. They are unbelievers. I'm trusting for their salvation, you may say. But Satan, you have no hand in their life. I stand as a bridge. Before they meet Christ, they enjoy the safety. Who is understanding this? Now, let me tell you this. One of the reasons why Satan stops people from coming to church is because he knows that there are certain battles in the spirit that you cannot fight alone. You will need higher graces and you will need the corporate anointing. So you may be doing well in terms of your personal prayer altar, but there are times that you need to come to the house of the Lord. Are we together? And under that intense corporate anointing, you are encouraged certain victories and certain results are wrought in your life. When we invite people to church, it's beyond just membership. It's beyond just gathering a crowd for a name. It's an advocacy to see. It's like an ark. It's like Noah's ark. Someone say, I will pray. You see the reason why Satan insists on prayerlessness. Don't say I'm not the prayer type. That means be ready for negative speaking from altars. Nobody is born the prayer type. You make yourself so by revelation. Go back home this night and whilst you sleep, don't snore yourself into the morning. Thank God for technology. An alarm clock is there. Don't say the Holy Spirit will wake me. That's irresponsibility. You have not gotten to that level of maturity. And even if he wakes you, your, your indiscipline will not allow that to happen. So don't tempt God. Get your alarm clock. Sanaka parantos kia baratos. Rakate barika katos yata. If you are if you, sleeping on your bed is causing you to sleep and get up, start moving. Shanika parantos kiata. Rekete baradukasia. You are starting the day. Carry your files. Lay your hands on it. In the name of Jesus, I'm a businessman. I go forth with joy. I am led forth with peace. I decree and declare that creation hears my voice. I attract destiny helpers. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that no enchantment, no divination against me can work I stand it is for freedom that Christ has set me free in the name of Jesus I declare that I'm not going back no ordinance of darkness no arrow that flies by day no noisome pestilence against me and mine will prosper I am Beulah I am Hepzibah I'm like a well watered garden all who see me seek to bless me because the hand of the Lord is upon my life the wisdom for my days at work in me the priest putting fire upon the altar and the man gets to the place of business and finds out that in an extraordinary way God is helping you you frustrate Satan when you create that prayer life the covenant of sacrifice is engaged by the sacrifice of your own life wholly loving the Lord and serving the Lord number two the covenant of consistent prayer as a lifestyle Prayer points or not, consistent word-based prayer. And then number three, giving. The third way you engage the covenant of sacrifice is giving. And giving is also threefold. Your time to serve God, your energy to serve God, and your resources to serve God. Unfortunately, pastors seem to zoom down on the resource part. I don't know why. But greater than the money, you want to be free from demonic covenants and rebuild an altar that speaks blessings. You must give your time to serve God, your energy to serve God, and then your resources to serve God. Hallelujah. In spite of the fact that there are conferences lined up, there are people to see, there's whatever to be done, I must do my due diligence as a man of God over you. 
and once we are done regardless how tired i am my whole life belongs to him time energy resources i don't compartmentalize my life there is no aspect of my life that belongs to god and then another belongs to me everything belongs to him so when satan comes around my life he finds out that i am god's property completely the part of you that is not god's property is the part he will attack hallelujah are we together everybody say giving joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. if it seem evil to you to serve the lord choose ye this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. Let's read the last sentence loud, clear, with faith in your heart. Ready? One to go. But as for me, one more time. Me and my house means me and my business. Me and my house means me and my company. Me and my house means me and my vision, ministry. Me and my house means me and everything I own, everything I have, everything under my care must serve my God. Are we together? You cannot serve God and your business serves idols. No. You cannot serve God even if your children or your spouse is not yet serving the Lord. That should become your prayer assignment. Lord, in their lifetime, let them be saved. We rebuild altars, tearing down old ones by number one, breaking the hold of demonic altars, demonic speakings by engaging the blood through repentance and through administering the blood. Number two, we engage the covenant of sacrifice, the sacrifice of our lives, giving ourselves wholly to God, the sacrifice of prayer prayer and i hope you know prayer goes with light of scripture your prayer life is as rich as your knowledge of the word if your knowledge of the word is poor so when i talk of prayer i'm not saying to choose prayer against scripture that, that is already defeat what gives strength to your prayer life is the strength of your spiritual understanding and then number three giving your time energy I tell you this and I submit to you in the name of the Lord as we wrap up. I made a covenant with God that there is nothing I have today, especially resources, that does not belong to Him. There is no kingdom project that this ministry or any ministry I know and love and respect that wants to be part of and I have a chance to be part of it that I fold my arms. And it has nothing to do with having all the money in the world. It is a covenant. If you don't use your time to serve God, you will use it to serve Satan. If you don't use your energy to serve God, you will use it to serve Satan. If you don't use your resources to serve God, you will use it to serve Satan. You may not serve Satan by serving Satan, but you will serve the needs that he brings for you. The endless needs that translate to pain and disappointment. This is what I did with my own life everyone who has experienced true liberty in christ this was the pathway i did not pray i still pray i did not give i still give i did not just commit myself to god i still commit and rededicate my life show me a believer that is ready to engage this to engage the blood in genuine repentance denouncing the works of darkness are we together advocating mercy by the blood number two show me a believer that understands the covenant of sacrifice the sacrifice of your life holy loving and following the lord the sacrifice of um what's the second one again prayer engaging the prayer altar and number three the sacrifice of giving of your time your energy and your resources i show you one person who has put an end to the reign of darkness like that gardener who will never even give we the chance to grow because in this life demons we are not given liberty to bind demons and trap them in one place indefinitely they have a legal right to operate within the earth and their legal right is because there is still one more person alive 
who has freely donated his will. Are we together now? Satan should not be an a legal occupant, but because there is one person created in the image of God who has still donated their will, Satan will still latch on that one person to operate upon the earth. Your assignment is not to bind them and keep them somewhere trapped forever. That liberty is not given to you yet. Your assignment is to sanitize your spiritual environment, to drive them at bay, that they do not become interruptions to your becoming, to your serving the purposes of God and living a victorious life. Who has learned something tonight? Our time is up, but spare me five minutes. Let's do some prayer. Please rise up on your feet. I'll give you three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Father, if there is any legal basis upon which Satan will lay claim on my life, I advocate the blood right now. Please go ahead and pray. If there is any legal basis, if there is any legal basis, the psalmist said, if I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus. Take a minute to pray. Every legal basis. The sin of commission, the sin of omission. I obtain mercy by God. I obtain mercy by God. Sins of bloodline. I obtain mercy by God. Territorial sins. I obtain mercy from God. Open your mouth and pray with humility and brokenness. One minute. Salaka parakata branda gabarato severes. Lekre pete manakato severianda karatos. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to begin to take authority in one minute. As simple as what I'm saying is, I'm releasing my faith with you that every speakings of every altar that is not of the Christ in the name of Jesus be silenced by the blood go ahead be silenced by the blood be silenced by the blood go ahead pray pray don't trivialize the simplicity of spiritual intelligence pray every ill speakings powered by demonic altars Advocating defeat, advocating delays, advocating untimely death, advocating poverty, advocating closed doors by the blood of the eternal covenant. I come against you. I dismantle those altars. Someone pray. I come against you. I dismantle those altars by the blood of the eternal covenant. I come against you. I dismantle those altars. Shaba leka parata preka toska debe leka pa. Attracting tragedies to my life. Attracting wicked men to my life. From one destruction to another. From one trouble to another. Rate leka paratos ko preka paratos ke priata kata prosigetesh. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you're going to cry for grace to engage this covenant of sacrifice. Lord, grace to follow you wholly. Grace to commit to a life of prayer consistently. And grace to dedicate my time, energy and resources to serve you. Go ahead and pray. Grace. Obtain that 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 grace. Sapela kaparanta kapera kusevra kete peleke pa. Shai gana malanta fraska bina katosi ya kafretis kete. Obtain that grace. In the name of Jesus, obtain that grace. Grace to follow the Lord wholly. Grace to follow the Lord wholly. Follow the Lord wholly. Grace 
grace to commit to a life of prayer speaking realities daily rewriting stories daily declaring my will daily making my contributions to the manifestations of God's word in my life daily obtain the giving grace the grace to give God your time the grace to give God your energy the grace to give God your resources not by manipulation by revelation in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray I want to make the altar call quickly we're out of time and then I'll speak over your life and we're done I don't have to cajole you after such a service you need Jesus you need Jesus quickly you need Jesus now the power of the cross the power of the blood is the key I told you that every demonic altar is powered by this central altar of sin and iniquity and for someone you came to church as you heard me speak the Holy Ghost began to speak to you make it right with God now I will count one to five leave your seat quickly and come and stand here one God bless you God bless you don't give Satan a chance with your life God bless you come come God bless you God bless you perhaps you may be the first God is counting on to dislodge these satanic demonic altars don't let Satan win over your life he's giving you an opportunity to make it right come don't say there are many people in front uh -uh, uh -uh. this is a personal business of destiny come keep clapping koinonia let's celebrate them as they come apostle I want to make it right with Jesus my grandfather could not make it right with Jesus. My father could not make it right with Jesus. But here's my chance to make it right. Here's my chance to give myself wholly and completely to this one who died for me. Come, come, keep clapping. 10 more seconds and we'll begin to pray. If you're coming, make your way, please. Those following online, God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. No matter how bad things are, Jesus wants to give you a new beginning. Make your way here. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you for making this noble decision. Listen, everything you've heard me preach tonight is true. And I want you to know that your coming here is an indication that you are closing a door permanently to darkness, to failure, to mediocrity, and you're opening up a new chapter in your life. And I salute your courage, young and old, male and female, thank you. Lift your right hand high above your head. Please say this after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare that I cannot help myself except you help me. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name we pray I pray that the grace that keeps, may that grace keep you. You walk in righteousness and from tonight it's a new story for you. In Jesus name I pray. Please look to my right, that will be your left. There are counselors who are waving the placard. Do cooperate with them, they will have a word with you very quickly and then you will return to your seat. Let's celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay. Um, let me just appreciate the presence of um, a dear woman of God, the, 
Deaconess Ibiso Adebifsi, the wife to the Executive Secretary of Living Faith. I understand she's here. God bless you, ma. Uh, okay, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We're honored to have you in our midst. May God bless you, you and all that came with you in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to receive? Let me speak over your life and then we're done. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over everyone here under the sound of my voice. Every altar speaking against your life. It doesn't matter what it is speaking. By the blood of the eternal covenant, those voices and the effects of their speaking come to end now. Those speakings of the altars come to end now. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let a new altar speak righteousness, speak favor, speak blessings, speak advancement, speak restoration, speak increase, speak new levels, speak advancement, speak multiplication. In the name of Jesus, everywhere the altar has spoken death, I speak life. Everywhere the altar has spoken poverty, I speak increase. Everywhere the altar has spoken curses, be blessed. Everywhere the altar has spoken delay, I declare go forward. In the name of Jesus, everywhere you have been stagnated in life and destiny, as a result of this prophetic declaration, let your wilderness become a fruitful field. Let your wilderness become a fruitful field and let your fruitful field become a forest. In the name of Jesus, someone shout it, say, I am free. One more time, say, I am free. For the last time, say, I am free. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Jesus' name. We're off for UK. Please pray with us. Remember that um, we're one big family. We're taking the power, the grace of Jesus to the United Kingdom. Make sure you connect. It's 5 p.m. begins from Thursday, 5 p.m. Friday in the morning. And then the final session is um, 5 p.m. Make sure you follow all of our social media platforms. Please invite everyone to connect. I'm going to be sharing some things that I think uh, it's very important that the Lord placed in my heart. We're trusting God for miracles, signs, wonders, for all kinds of deliverances, for all who are within the United Kingdom, even though the space, uh, physically speaking, there might not be space again, uh, but you can connect online. Connect online with an open heart and trust God to give you a great encounter in Jesus' name. Have you been blessed tonight? Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy liberty. See you.
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.